let's take a look at some of the improvements to drawings in SOLIDWORKS 2014. So we'll switch over to SOLIDWORKS and we have a drawing open. Now the first improvement isn't actually within the drawings interface, it's a part or assembly level. If we go to our annotations folder, um, within here there are various views or planes that we can attach our annotations to. We now have a new one called the 2D notes area and what this allows us to do is attach tables or bills of materials or title blocks to that. The nice thing about this though is that it's possible for us to rotate the model and the title block or whatever is attached to that plane remains static on the screen. If we switch back to the, the drawings interface we'll have a look at some improvements here. First one that we'll look at is to the view palette. So you'll notice that when I refresh my view palette, that all the views that I've placed on my sheet are on the are in the view palette. Um, the ones that have already been placed have a an icon next to them just to indicate that they they are there. Which means that if I want to create another bottom view, as an example, I can do very very easily. In this case, I actually want to add an isometric view and you'll notice as soon as I do, we get a little icon just indicating that that view has been placed down. So that's gonna be useful in itself. Let's just remove the view palette. Next up, um, we'll look at replacing model view. So a little bit of work has been done on this drawing. We have some dimensions down, we have a section view created. Now let's say I've realized at this stage that I shouldn't be working on the part. I should instead be working on the main assembly that contains this part. In previous releases, if I wanted to change a drawing reference, I'd have to go through the file open references dialog box, or alternatively, start the drawing again. In SOLIDWORKS 2014, we have a dedicated tool to replace a model reference. If we click on replace model, we can replace all views, or one view or multiple views with a new model reference. The nice thing here is that they don't have to be the same file type, so you could change a part for an assembly or vice versa. So if we just browse, in this case we want to change the model views for the top level assembly, and because my original model is contained within this assembly, all the drawing references um, are maintained, nothing becomes dangling. In SOLIDWORKS 2013, they did some great work with the section tool. Um, they introduced a tool called Section View Assist, which just made the process of creating sections much, much easier. Where it was limited, I guess, was uh, when you came to edit an already placed section view. You went back to the original interface. When SOLIDWORKS 2014, everything has been brought up to, uh, to the same level. So if I go and edit my section view, you'll see that the Section View Assist tool launches. And again, it's very easy for me to, to create my section views like so. Okay, the next improvement that we're going to look at is within Stack Balloons. So I'm just going to launch Stack Balloons from my command search and then place some down. Okay, so we've placed our Stack Balloons down and they're not in numerical sequence. Now, if you wanted them in numerical sequence, in previous releases, you'd have had to either adjust your bill of materials or um, just reapply the, the balloons, start it again almost. In 2014, you can just right click on a balloon, select reattach, and then reattach the reference. Like so. Okay, if we look at this view in a bit more detail, we have a section of the, the cover here. Now, if we open up this part and we look in the solid bodies folder, you'll see that there isn't one solid body in here. There is a surface body, yet it appears in our section. So that's the next improvement. We can now section surface bodies. In previous releases, that, that um, cover would have just disappeared. Switching back to the drawing, the next enhancement we'll look at is um, the creation of virtual sharps. You use virtual sharps to dimension to the intersection of um, virtually intersecting edges, basically. So in previous releases, you'd have selected those virtually intersecting edges and then used the point tool. 
We've streamlined the process in 2014. So now when we start the dimension tool, we can right click on an edge, select find the intersection, and then choose the line that intersects it. If we do the same up the top, we'll just right click here, find intersection, select a straight line, and then we'll just place that dimension on top. So it's not really doing anything different here, it's just streamlined that whole process of creating those dimensions. So with our dimension placed down, if we go to the leaders tab, you'll now find that we can display our leader and dimension lines differently to our extension lines. Like so. If we shift the dimension so it sits above the, uh, the dimension line, and we go to dual dimensions, we'll just turn that on. You'll now notice that there is an option to split that, which will just allow us to place the dual dimension on the underside of the dimension line. Similarly within here, we now have two dimension text boxes, which allows us to place the text above the line, and below the line. Okay, we'll go and have a look at a note now in the corner of this drawing. So it tells us here that the note is currently attached to the view front and it tells us the model referenced and it tells us that the note should not move and be uppercase. So if we wanted to attach it to the right view, uh, in previous releases we'd have had to cut and paste it and then the notes position would change. We can now right click on a note, select attachment and we can either attach it to another view or to the sheet itself. So if we attach to another view, select that right view, you'll see that the view updates for us automatically. The other problem that we have with this, view, uh, this note is that it is lowercase. We can now change it to uppercase with the click of the tick box. What's nice here is that when you are using that tick box, you can add exclusions to it. So if you want to keep your unit system as a lower case, for instance, you can do just add it to the exclusion list here. Okay, we'll now go ahead and create a detail view. And we'll place it over here. Okay, now we can come in and we can edit this uh, this label note here. So if I just change the scale, like so, you can see the view updates to reflect that change. But in previous releases, if you got these um, the syntax of that um, note incorrect, then it would lose its sort of, sort of parametric link to the view. Now let's say we delete some stuff out we can get it back. So we have these label tags. So I can say, I want the name of the view followed by the label. On the next line, we'll have the scale followed by the delimiter. On this view, we'll create some dimensions. And we'll just shift that out to the side like so. And then we'll add this 45 on. Now, in order for me to line that up with the, th the other dimension, the linear, uh, it would have been a purely by eye thing in a previous release. You now find that the dimension actually snaps into place like so. We now have a new dimensions type called angular running dimensions, where we can select a reference. And these are very similar to the ordinate dimensions. And then we can just start clicking where we want to place these. Now the way these dimensions display can be adjusted. For instance, if we go to our leaders tab, we can have them as a chain. We can run them bi-directionally and we can extend the lines to the center of the set. We'll just go in and add a datum. We have seen some improvements in the note tool. If we just go in and add a note, 
we can just in here type our note and we can now reference geometric tolerance symbols within our note tool. Uh, if we go to our symbol library, you'll see that that's been updated. And I just want to select a geometric tolerance, this case, the concentric symbol. And then also from there, we want the date and flag. So the geometric tolerance dedicated tool is still there. You've just got a bit more flexibility in as much as you can create those within notes now. Also, when you select an entity, the item or the model geometry to which it is attached now also highlights so we can see that that note is attached to that bottom arc edge there. Within the document properties of the drawing, you can now specify what you want your secondary sheet format to be. So when we come in and add a sheet, it's going to use the one that we specify from within here. So as we add our sheet, you can see we get a different sheet format attached. In this drawing, um, sheet will add a bill of materials and we'll just attach it to, let's say, our front model view. So as it comes in, the first thing that you'll notice here is that in the number column, everything comes in in numerical sequence. Now that's no accident. Um, what we've actually done with the bill of materials is we've saved our sorting scheme. So you can define a sorting scheme here and then just save that like so. And then every time you add in the bill of materials, it's gonna automatically sort it for you. If we just come in and add a column, You'll notice that we can now reference toolbox specific properties. So as an example, I can select standard as a property and you can see it comes through for me automatically. Now on this sheet, you'll see that at about row 29, we're gonna run out of room. So we need to split the bill of materials uh, there. Now what we can do is if we go to split, we can select a horizontal auto split and get it to split at a particular row count. So if we set that to 29, and we can apply it this time only or continuously. As we apply that and we go to our assembly, what we'll do here is we'll just unsuppress some components to add some, some more rows into the bill of materials. And you'll find that when that sheet rebuilds, that it's automatically split at row 29. So it allows you to proactively uh, split your bill of materials. Okay, so some nice improvements to drawings there. If we switch back to the slide, we'll just summarize those. So we can have notes in our annotation view flat to the screen. We have the drawing view panel icons in the view palette we can replace the drawing views and we can do all or selective views we can edit our section cutting line using the section view assist tool we can now section surface bodies we can reattach stack balloons find intersections while dimensioning um, dimension leaders can be uh, differently different extension line styles and we can have text above and below the dimension line we have an uppercase switch in our notes uh, and we can attach the note to the view or the sheet on the right click menu. We can view our label tags and reapply them. Um, we have slot callouts. We can have soft snaps for angular dimensions. We can have angular running dimensions and datum features attached to points. We can define a secondary sheet format specification. Um, within our bill of materials, we can save our sort settings we can access toolbox properties and we can automatically split the bill of materials at a specific row count. That brings us to the end of this session.